What can fans look forward to most in the new series? Um, well, oh, so, so this season's really about family and seeing Reacher with his colleagues from the 110, this unit that he hand, hand assembled in the military, um, gives us a chance to see kind of a, you know, uh, like a, a, a funny lighter side, you know, that we haven't seen before. And uh, I think people are gonna enjoy that. It's like, look how funny he can be. This season of Reacher is based on the book, Bad Luck and Trouble. It was 10 years to the day since I was fired from my previous job. 10 years had gone by and I was flooded with kind of nostalgia and I was instantly thinking, ah, oh, what are those guys doing now? Where are they? What are they up to? Wouldn't it be great to see them again? Because we worked together. I mean, it was television. It wasn't saving anybody's life or anything, but it was an intense, intimate little unit, me and nine other people in this very important unit within the TV broadcast station. Uh, we saw more of each other than we saw of our families. It was a really, it was like a family. And I hadn't seen him for 10 years. And so I thought, I've got to put Reacher in that situation. I've got to have him for some reason back in contact with these people that he worked with so intimately. Uh, with the added dimension with Reacher, he's taken a very eccentric uh, course of his life after he left the army. He's a wanderer. He cannot settle down. He cannot own anything. He's always got to be on the move. What would they think of him? You know, up to that point, Reach is super self-confident, but these were very important people to him. He trusted them, he loved them. He trusted them with his life. They did all kinds of important stuff together. What would they think of Reach's choices? And for the very first time, I wanted a slight element of, of self-doubt in Reacher. Would they think he was a jerk for doing what he'd done? Because those people's opinions really mattered to him. So I wanted to recreate that feeling of, of nostalgia. What was my funniest experience of filming season two? Well, I thought it was hilarious. Uh, the night that I was in 40 below weather with nothing on but a t-shirt and a medic walked up to me with a timer with a straight face and said, you have eight minutes in this scene before you get gangrene and we'll have to cut off a body part. And I said, okay. Is this for real? And she said, I'm dead serious. I was hired just for this timer and your skin. And we had to shoot the entire night in little little batches where we hop out from behind the heater and we have, and she clicks her timer like the Grim Reaper off in the corner. I got to act through a blizzardy cold with the Grim Reaper watching me. That was probably my favorite. Maybe that was a top three. Really for me, it's not so much Scene, watching scenes and seeing characters come to life uh, because I write these characters and I, they're on the page and I hope that they're vivid and I hope that they are uh, compelling and attractive or sad or tragic. And that's the first thing I noticed early on in, in the first episode, that one of their old colleagues that was killed, they go to visit the widow who is a young woman with a young boy. And I remember writing that, thinking how sad this is, that, you know, this is, woman has now, her life is ruined. And I was really interested to see how that showed up on the screen, and it is beautiful. I mean, sad, uh, awful, what a prospect, but the way it comes across is so compelling. That's what I love about it, is seeing people that I made up actually living and breathing and talking and uh, emoting on the screen. Oh, well, I think, you know, when I think of those this, those days, usually the most challenging ones are the ones I remember, you know, um, but there's, there was uh, an episode where we were in a bus yard and it was super muddy. Like, like you know, it, like every time you step your foot in the mud, it's like, it's like a, va a vacuum seal and pulls your shoe off at six inches deep. And, um, and I had to roll around in that mud under the buses, diving in and out of, play, you know, avoiding getting hit by cars. And on the one hand, it's like, I, you know, you start off the night, and you're like, I don't want to get muddy. <laughs> you know, then by the end of the night, you're diving headfirst into it. You know, it's kind of, you start to feel like a kid again, you know? Um, if it wasn't so cold, that'd probably be one of my favorite shoots, um, fi fighting in that stuff. 
Um, but then I, I think of uh, some of the cold nights that we had where it was, you know, it was like 30, 40 below and we're out there trying to, trying to act like you're not shit. I mean, it's a pretty unique gift to find out that you have the ability to stop your body from shivering for just long enough to get a take. Like, like the second your dialogue is done, it's like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> You're like, fuck. I mean, but we made it work. So hopefully when you watch the show, you don't look, it doesn't look like we're about to die from frostbite, but I was. That's a good question. Um, I rem I think one of the most challenging was um, towards the end of both our shoot and the show, where we are in a barn and everything is covered in snow and there's a helicopter that's supposed to take off. The helicopter won't fly because it's 30 below and everything is frozen and then it does fly and we're supposed to be all cool and oh, we sipping were cool. beer and then the helicopter starts whipping yeah. snow, freezing cold snow at us and we're just the cool the yeah. whole time during this polar vortex coming down on us. That was a challenging day but mm -hmm. oddly also Fascinating. So cool. I mean, it was insane. The real helicopter, amazing. But they had medics on set with like little temperature have, gauges, checking yeah. your nose yeah, I got for frostbite. frostbite. Yeah. Like it was, yeah. That's. I think that's been the most challenging is to mix. <sighs> But what's the fun day? We need to come up with they more. What's the fun days? days? There you're okay. fine. What's the remarkable day? I love the day when we were shooting the big raid with all the Humvees on the uh, airfield mm. down in Hamilton. I when really, she was sick. I was sick. Well, was you were And then sick. we did the we biker did. scene, and you got sick the next. Yeah. Yes. I liked the scene where we were all in the car, and we back. We were backing up. Oh, yes. That was a good one. The masks, because we were all together, when the masks were so hilarious, and we couldn't get them on properly. And yeah. they'd be like, badass, and you pull your balaclava down, but like one eyeball would be at the cheek, or like too close together. Who had yeah. the child mask? Was it you? <laughs> no, you don't know. Or was it Alan? Somebody had one where the eyes, and he's like, what is this made for children? We're like, yes, because they're robbing banks. What are you I talking about? Was, you just have me. a big head, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, it was you, yeah. and there were like small, small tiny ones. Small, little, like, I remember like that. this. We yeah. had good jokes on like, set. We had a well, lot, we of, a lot of, clearly there was like a lot to to pick. We had a lot yeah. of great moments. There's so much going on in the season, so yeah. uh, you can see, and maybe based on our performances, you'll see how much fun we had. <laughs> yeah. I've, what, I can tell you what I've not loved the most about filming season two of Reacher, and that is the weather in Toronto over the winter. Um, shooting in a blizzard is the least fun thing I can imagine, and I think everybody should have to do it once. Yeah, I mean, this season is so action-packed, full of stunts. I mean, every episode is explosive. It's really a much bigger season than last season in a lot of ways, not only because the cast is, you know, a little bit bigger and and there are the flashbacks, but everything, the scope of it all, just feels really explosive. Um, and so we have, um, yeah, just a lot of different dynamics of stunts. And for me, it's a matter of um, just being in the rehearsals and learning things. I was a dancer when I was younger, and so um, I love going to stunts and picking up the choreography, and, and, um, and I love doing my own stunts. Um, there actually is a sequence where um, they had me, you know, go through the glass and, you know, I'm fighting this guy in, in a morgue and, and uh, my stunt double was like, you're doing what? You're, I'm doing that. I was like, no, I'm doing it. And she's like, okay, amazing. And, and we did it and it was amazing. And, um, and it's, it's great to, to work with our stunt team who are incredible to uh, be able to actually do those things myself um, because they, you know, they've prepared us so well and, and they've, um, they enlist trust in us to, to be able to perform. So um, it's really exciting and also just learning. I mean, I'm a nerd and I'm maybe a little bit method, so I like to, to know what I'm doing. I like to handle my guns appropriately, working with our armor to do that. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's just been such a cool experience to, to get to really do the stuff um, as, as our characters would. Need a new jacket. What's wrong with the one you just bought? It has blood on it. Mm -hmm.